All right, everybody, this is part two. This is where we stand at the moment with our block. Kent was just telling me we're gonna start off by ta taking off the timing chain. That's right here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in behind that cover. So that looks like it's all these bolts I'll need to get off? Yeah. Okay, I can start with that and then we'll be able to... Now this timing belt, once this comes out, we can then lift the crankshaft? No, once the this comes off, we take the three bolts out of the cam mm -hmm. and then we can take the chain off, slide the cam out, and then we'll take this off. And then we gotta start taking these loose. They're all individual bolts? Right, for the pistons. Okay. They all got to come off the crank and push them out the front and then we can take these off and lift the crank up. That's where we're at. Yeah. All right, let's get started. Probably 7 sixteenths. 7 sixteenths. Are we going to need these? Uh, you probably want some shiny stainless or chrome ones, won't you? Yes. But I don't want you having to go through a <laughs> sludge again and really find screws that I've chucked out. <laughs> it's crazy how I'm here, my kids are in there, and I just feel like I can hear her screaming, making me paranoid. You can. Huh? You can. You can? Yeah. That is her? You can hear her. She's right out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> All the kids are out there. Okay. All four of them. Well, that's nice. I thought I was going crazy. You might be hearing mine screaming. She's she got a set of lungs on her. <laughs> she likes to scream. Oh, yeah. Those bolts are off, so they should just slide off. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Every time I take something off of this engine, something really pretty comes through. <laughs> that looks nice, I actually really like that. Let me bring you guys in a bit closer. So that's the timing chain. I know my brakes came in. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah, everybody. Let's have a quick look here. So you guys might have seen, if you're keeping up with my social media, that my um, suspension parts came in from Detroit Speed. And now, bare brakes, thanks to Holly and DSC, they're all here. The only thing I'm waiting for now is my tires. And once they come in, we're going to get started and building and making our rolling chassis. But for now, let's get back to this engine. Okay, so as you were saying, the timing belt, um, what's the role of the timing belt? It keeps your cam, your, your uh, valves and your pistons all in line so they don't, so they work together and they don't hit each other mm -hmm. uh, and makes combustion and exhaust and all that stuff possible what makes everything the internal parts of the motors what, what um is. drives them the rpms what drives this yes <clears throat> what tells it what to do is it the well, R the, the pistons and how much throttle you give it okay. determines how much how fast this crank turns and the faster this crank turns the faster this cam turns and it all just these are these are timed perfectly so that the valves open and close exactly when they want to, so it can, 
so it can produce its power. Okay. And if they're not in if they're not in line with one another and they're not the way they're supposed to be, it will not run. Well, people at home have opening up old 350 engines. What makes a good timing belt and what does mine look like? Well, a double roller is a good timing belt and you've got a double roller. So where is the, because it's got? And it's got two sets of sprockets. Oh, the teeth? Yes. Okay. There's two of them instead of just one. And some of them do have one? Yes, and some of them actually just have a belt. Some of the more modern vehicles today run on a belt versus a chain. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, when you if you was to build this thing yeah. and put it together, you would these marks right here is what you're looking for. See that dot? Yep. Yeah. And that dot. They're not exactly aligned. Or it would be if this turned just a, no, they're they're real close. If this would turn just a little bit, it okay. Would, they would be right in line with one another. They're what do the very dots close. Mean? Top dead center, number one cylinder, which is right here. That's this piston. Uh huh. Okay. That means it's at the basically at the top. It's not quite there, but if you turn this just a little bit where them two dots is. Lined up, Which is pretty much, be. yeah, I can see that. If you turn that just a tad, that piston would come on up and be flush with the top. And that's what it's meant to be. That's that's where you set your engine up at. That means number one piston, this one right here. The next thing that would happen if this motor was running is there would be an explosion in this piston. And that would that would start the process of the motor cranking over. Mm-hmm. And what about this second hole? Um, uh, what second hole? This one here. No, that hole yeah. and that hole are supposed to be in line with oh, one another. Oh, and that's what's going to indicate that this that's engine will be okay one, to fire up. The number one piston is at top dead center. So if somebody opens up their chaining, chain um, belt and that's all the way up here, what would that mean if it's not aligned? Well, if it's, it would mean it's not on number one top dead center, you'd have to keep turning it until it was. Mm -hmm. That's just to that's just to assemble it okay. to get the motor put together. Once you assemble it, and you assemble it with them two dots in line with one another, they ain't, they ain't going to be in line with each other anymore unless it you turn it right back to that position. Okay. But like if you was building it, say this. This crank, this cam, was not in this block. You done sent it off, had the machine work done, and you put the cam in it, and you put the crank in it. When you assemble it, that's that's where you would put that. You would line them two up. That way you would know that your cam and your crank is where they're supposed to be for this engine to run. Would people have problems with the chain? I mean, mine looks like everything is fine, but would everybody's look like this? Or what would indicate that something is really wrong? Mm. What would indicate something would be wrong with this yeah. chain? Yeah. They really don't much, nothing ever go wrong with these chains. Not, okay. that, I, not that I'm aware of. Now, I'm not a. There's probably engine builders out there that deal with this stuff on a daily basis mm -hmm. that probably have run into things, but... Uh, because, I mean, that's a pretty solid chain, and mm -hmm. those teeth are so good. I mean, them chains do stretch over time. Because mm -hmm. it's pretty it, tight. This looks tight. It's got... A, oh, okay. It's got a little bit, but that's, that's just a... That's not uncommon. That's not... It's a little stretched, but not bad. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean that's about the only thing that ever happens to these double roller timing chains is they just stretch a little. I've never I mean, the reason one jumping, you know, teeth jumping or nothing yeah. like that. The reason I ask is because, you know, we've um, on the channel we've seen so many survivor cars actually have the original engines. Mm -hmm. And it always fascinated me on how an engine can survive for such a long time, for decades and decades, 
and now I can see that it's so possible because of just the machine work involved here. Mm. It's um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Because you're right. Like, what would what could go wrong here? You know. Yeah. I mean, Everything's I've, in its place. I've not heard of nothing ever really go, major going wrong with it. But I, like I said, I'm not in that field every day like a lot of them are. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kent. <laughs> You might be asking the wrong, <laughs> wrong person. No, that's pretty cool. So we took that off, and then the next thing you said is there were some bolts here that we have to take off. They're right here. Oh. Them three. Those three, okay. So we can take this sprocket off of the cam, mm -hmm. and then, then we will be able to lift the sprocket and take this chain. And we have to keep all of this, of course. No. Oh, not, I get a new you're one? You're not gonna reuse this. Yeah, it's well, not, it looks so good, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, you're building power though. Okay, so what does that mean here? You want a, you want a high, high quality uh, double roller time and chain, or you might even want a gear drive, or you might, there's lots of different things. We are going to do this, make uh, it a stick hopefully. My buddy's got a gear drive in his, and some people like it, some people don't. They're mm -hmm. kind of noisy. They sound, they sound kind of like a... Uh, when they're sitting there running, they sound kind of like a supercharger. It sounds like a car might have a supercharger, so it's whining. And, and I'll have to take you over and let you listen to his Camaro. It's one of them uh, uh, guys that I run around with. Okay. He's okay, got sure. a Camaro with one on him. Oh, I would love to hear it for sure. Okay, so I'll have to get a new one of these. Yeah, I, I'd not build an engine and use any of this stuff back in it. You get a new cam, double roller time and chain, new pistons, probably rods. All right. Yeah, we're gonna make, we're gonna make twice the power this thing had. Oh yes. I'm gonna get started and take these three off. Yeah, I think they're a half inch or nine sixteenths. I'm gonna get something to stamp these. Stamp? These mains. We need them. We need to be able to know which one of them. These have to go right back where they came from. You can't take this one off and use it back here. Okay. Or this one off and use it up here. These have to be numbered. And we'll number them. Each one of them. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll know that that's the order they need to be right. put back in. One will go there, two will go there, three, four, five, front to back. Okay, and is this one piece here? That's one piece? No, this is your crank. Yep. This this is all one piece. So... From here yep. to here. That's one piece. That's the yeah, gold we're looking one at. one piece. No, well, that's the rods. That's the rods, okay. They come off, but they're connected to this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece. This piece, this piece, this piece, this piece. All these are connected to this crank, and it it's kind of looks like that. Up, down, up, down. That's a rod. No, this is your uh, your oil pump drive. This is your oil pump. Pumps the oil to the engine. Yep. Yeah. And this goes like, goes like that, and this spins, mm -hmm. and it pumps, sucks oil in there and pumps it throughout the engine. That's, if you didn't have that, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have an engine running for very long. That's, mm -hmm. that's the life of it. It's got to have oil. It's got to have oil. Everywhere. And that's what we can see. And I guess it's the oil as well that keeps it in such good condition. It helps for sure, yeah. Because I mean, when I see this, I just feel like, wow, it's still so new on the inside. Yep. Still so shiny. Mm -hmm. Whereas anything on the outside, you know, you can see dried up rust and you can mm -hmm. t tell it's wear and tear, but the inside, and I guess that's what I'm enjoying the most, is just seeing how, I don't know, it looks good. Yeah. It looks good.
took off those three bolts. Now I can basically just pull this out, pull the chain first. Mm -hmm. Pull that off briefly. Just try to bring your cam out with it. You need like a crowbar or something? I got it off. Yeah. Got it. It's like I don't feel like uh, throwing this in the rubbish because it's so good. No, we'll hang on to that. We'll hang on to it for now. So maybe I'll keep these three bolts as well. Uh, yeah. Okay. What about this thing here? That stays on the crank. That stays on. Turn it over this way, be a little easier, I believe. Okay, so we've turned it around and we're trying to get the cam out. Alright, you just start working it this way. And it's got little things that sits in, then it'll fall out of them and you gotta kinda just see it just fell out of one. And you just kinda gotta manipulate it. It fell out again. You gotta jiggle it around till it Alright, let me give it a go. Looks good. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, so looking at the cam here, I mean, there's obviously a lot of um, stuff in between. What would say that it's really good, and what would say that you know it's completely a goner? Uh, your, your lobes would be an indication of what kind of shape it's in. My lobes. What's my lobes? These are all lobes. Okay. Or these two, that's 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 what it rides on. It rides on a, a bearing, uh, not a bearing, but a, a uh, rides on these little things right here. See, that's pressed in there. Yeah. It's a, I don't know what they call them, but. So they look all smooth here, <clears throat> and there's a little bit of markings. Let's see. In between here, that's where the machine guys will be able to clean all that out? In between? No. Uh, that, well, that's just the color it is. Yeah, most people build an engine, they would not, they would just throw this away. Okay. Um, but I can show you kind of what it does. This basically just opens and closes your valves when they need to be open and closed. And uh, it also turns your distributor, runs on a gear mm -hmm. right here. Um, it also runs your oil pump. It's right a big there. part of the engine, isn't it? These lifters run on this oh. and they when it turns over it lifts these pushes them up and that pushes the valve open so the gas or exhaust can come in or go out mm -hmm. and then as the engine turns around it closes back off and then it goes all the way around till it's that's right, because the engine is constantly mm -hmm. turning, turning, that I know. So each one of these is in a different location that tells each cylinder when the valves to open and close as this is turning around in and, order to put the gas in. And, and that again comes back into this mm -hmm. 
pistons as well, where they, they go they up and down, up and down just like these consistent valves. with this. Right. Okay. Yeah. This front one. Oh, yeah. This yeah, that's one. the front because it's got this the bolts. This is the front one. It runs your fuel pump. There's the fuel pump there. There's a rod. That's the oil pump. That's the oil pump. Okay, the fuel pump. The fuel pump, pump bolts right here, and there's a rod. It's right there. What's all this crap? Silicone. Okay. See that rod right there? Yep. That metal rod. Oh, yes. It runs on this. And as this turns, that thing goes in and out, and it pumps the fuel to the carburetor. And as it's turning, this is turning, and that's turning the distributor to tell it when to fire each cylinder. And also, this oil pump runs on, the oil pump runs on the, I don't see how it does though, but I know it does. The oil pump runs on that somehow too. It turns like that. But I don't know. Because the oil pump and the oil filter were on towards the back end. Mm -hmm. And this is that's back why here. that's and the, the back distributors here. Distributors back there, everything back there. So it runs all the valves, the fuel pump, the distributor, and the oil pump. Now, is oil going through this as well? Mm -mm. In the center, no. It's just no. everything's on the outside. Right. Yeah. Just on the surfaces where the two metal surfaces meet. Mm -hmm. Kent actually knows the firing order of the pistons. Yeah, most people do. It's on the intake. Most people do? Yeah. Tell us, what is it for? And is that the same for all 350 engines? Or? Yes. Uh, I was looking for your intake. Right here is your intake. Right here. Firing order, one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. Yeah, but you knew that before you saw that. Well, that's because <laughs> I've... I, Memorized I've, that number? I've messed with them a lot, yeah. <laughs> now, Kent works a lot on diesel engines. No, I couldn't tell you much about the Fords, uh, their firing order. I don't have a factory intake. That's an aftermarket intake. <laughs> and it's not on it, but it's not the same. It's different. Would and you I, say you know and the... And I don't um, know about LSs either. The LSs? I, I'm assuming they would be the same, 18436572, but I'm not positive. Uh, I haven't messed with them much. I'm just kind of getting into them. Well, you are gonna know about them soon enough once... Probably. You work on this. Yeah. Your right. best engine work would be what? Cummings? Mm. Because you work on the diesels all day? Well, them them's, uh, freight liners and Peterbilts and stuff. Um, no, I guess I'm probably more comfortable working with these engines right here than I am with any of them. Mm -hmm. um, I built my first one of these when I was probably 17 years old, 16 years old, in a gravel parking lot you know, on the ground. Where did the engine come from? Uh, it was in an old truck that I bought. It was a 72 Chevy short bed pickup. It was like six different colors, and I gave like $400 for it. It had blue fenders, red doors, parking, white cab. Parking lot gravel. Mm -hmm. What on earth did you use to take the engine to hoist it out? Oh, we just lifted it. <laughs> Me and my buddies, we did our crazy stuff back then. We didn't have stuff like we got now. And you just thought, whatever, I'll just open it up. Did mm -hmm. you have any experience mm -mm. with the engine before? No. Nope. You were just going to play around? I just asked for advice from a couple guys. and. One guy had a little more experience than others, and he kind of gave me some direction what to do and helped me do this and that, and ordered the parts from a 
it was a place called, it was, I don't think they're around anymore, but back in the day, they were, they were several places. And it was called Super Shops. And they had all kinds of aftermarket performance stuff. And uh, I saved, he told me what I needed to get, and I saved my money. Took about two or three months, bought all the parts. And the, in the meantime, my engine was at the machine shop getting everything it needed done. And uh, get, when we got it back, I'd done, been able to go get all my parts and we just started building it in the, on the ground. Wow. It's a miracle that it even ran, but <laughs> it did. I drove it from Arkansas to Tennessee. Uh, it had a wow. tunnel ram, two four barrel carburetors on it and got about six miles to the gallon. <laughs> and I drove it all the way here when I moved up here. And I drove it for several years and then never did, never did have no trouble out of it. It ran till the day I took it apart. Wow. That was my first one. Well, you worked on so many systems. What about those, um, those four vets with the fuel injections? You've had some experience with that as well? Yeah, well, I've, I've tinkered with them a little bit, but uh, that's, that's different, different stuff than what I normally do. That stuff I just had to kind of go real slow and make sure I didn't mess nothing up because that's, you're getting into expensive stuff, mm. stuff that I can't afford to replace if I, you know, messed it up, which I wouldn't had to replace it. You know, he would, yeah, he would just go get another one. But still, it would be on me, and I wouldn't like it. I don't think you've messed up many at all. No. No. <laughs> even even just putting his emblems on the car, I was a nervous wreck. You know, yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, because uh, I've seen that connection. It's um. It's very exciting. expensive cars, and I'm drilling holes in the side of it to put emblems on. Yes. Uh, I didn't feel good about it. Nerve-wracking stuff. But well, you, you are going to feel good about fixing up your big block. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it don't, don't bother me. I'm working on my own stuff. Yeah. That's going to be pretty cool. So um, hopefully I'll be able to drop in when that starts happening. Yep. And have a look. But for now, a small block, 350, right here, tailing belts off. And now what's the next step, Kent? We're going to start pulling the pistons out. Okay. We're going to start at the front and work our way to the back. Now, you said that you are going to stamp these to know the order. What are you going to use? I'm going to stamp these and these. I'm okay. going to use a punch. A punch. Right here. OK. Because I don't have a number set. You know, you, if you could take a number set and take like a one or a two or a three or a four. So are you just going to do it like um, make a tally mark? Like I'm, I'm going to make like one hole, yep. one punch, and one punch here. And this one will have two? Two punches, two punches here, mm -hmm. three punches, three punches here, four punches, four punches here. Okay. Don't really need to do this one. That's pretty you know where it's going to go. Yeah. yeah. All, All right. right. So and then the same thing with these. I'm going to put a little punch, punch, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And that way you know where these were. If, if you want to end up doing something different, which we're probably not going to use, more than likely using none of this stuff, except for these. Okay. And the crank and the block. Well, we're going to use the block and the crank and this. Mm-hmm. Um, but the pistons that I order new. And the rods we're probably going to order new. Okay. Because that, that's the pistons there, isn't it? That's the rod. That's the rod. Pistons. See it right down in there, right there? Right oh, there. yeah. There's that piston. Oh, yeah. Okay. They connect to that rod and yeah. they connect to the crank. Mm -hmm. And it's a rotating assembly. Uh, see if I can... Thought I might be able to turn it. No. By hand? I thought I could, but I can't. I was just going to show you how it, 
hat rotated. It's too tight though. We're gonna have to turn it though to get to these bolts. Cause you can only, you can get to these two, but mm -hmm. you can't get to them two. Okay. So we're gonna have to turn it to where you can. Manually so. turn the crank. Yeah. I've heard of that. So, we I've need to find I've heard, something. I've seen some crazy videos. Something to, I guess, from this part here, if we could hold. Yeah, or a boat that would go in here and we could just put a wrench on it to turn oh, yeah. it with. Let's see how big this part is. That was our crank. Now this boat. is the part where you said you don't want to get it damaged by having right. something stuck in there. I didn't want there. to put nothing in there that would damage them threads when we was trying to pull your harmonic balancer off. Can we put some kind of a wrench around the cylinder part here? No, no. You, don't want to, you don't want to mess that up either. Okay. It, that thing's got to go on there and fit right and you could, you could gouge that up. And by turning these teeth, it's not going to turn it? Yeah. It will turn it if we, put, if we turn these teeth? Mm -hmm. So why can't we put something there? So we we can. Have... I was just looking for what would be best to put on there. You're not going to use that time and chain set. Yeah, because so. I can get scratches in that. <clears throat> yeah. So. Oh, there you go. So there, them's the two we're taking off first, and then them. And I'll then nice. I'll stamp them. Ladybugs everywhere. There's a lot of ladybugs in Tennessee. I have heaps inside my house, in my closet. Do you want to hear a funny story? <laughs> Almost last year, I was sitting on the computer, and I'm working, and I've got Dean and Sophia just going at it right there near my table, and. Um, they, were, they found a ladybug near the window. This poor, poor ladybug. So she's talking and he wants to get close to it. He wants to hold it. She wants to grab it. You know, and then it's on his hands and she wants to get it on her hand. Then she starts screaming because she's scared. So she's got her mouth wide open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the ladybug just gets up, flies straight into her throat. <laughs> Yeah. And then Dean's screaming because he's scared. <laughs> he's like, you put it in your mouth. And then she's there screaming, ah, it's inside my mouth. And there I am. So what's going to happen that she ate a ladybug? <laughs> At least it wasn't a stink bug. Yes. You got it. Oh, you got it. Oh, it was just, I'm like, so what happens? I'm trying to look it up on the internet. I'm like, be quiet. You'll be fine. <laughs> just drink some water. <laughs> Ladybug. So we're going to put these just slightly back on here so I don't mess up the threads. I want to tap that down just a tad. So the bolts that we took off, you've just put them back in. The nuts. The nuts, sorry. Yes. Just so I could tap on the end and not mess the threads up. I mean, this is a brass hammer, but still. Mm -hmm. And that can just lift off. And then it, it loosens it up where you can get a hold of it. And then what happens? Just keep pulling it up? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's part of the piston? Uh, this is part of the piston. This is the little bearing, or I don't know if they call them bearings. I guess they are. That's, but to, that's what, these are on top and bottom. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what wears out. The bearings wear out. This is what wears out. And so this won't. Okay. So you, when you rebuild it, you just replace these. The piston bearings. I have heard about that a lot, and I've actually seen I guess those. they're calling them bearings. That, I, I mean, think it is bearings. They're not really bearings. A bearing is uh, something that's got little ball bearings in it mm -hmm. that you grease, but I guess they call these bearings, Because I guess too. together they make a ball. Right. The shape of a... 
So anyhow, these are there's one on top, one on the bottom. They press in like that. See that little groove? Right there? Yep. And that little notch in that thing? That little bit there? Uh-huh. Okay. That, that's what makes that fit in oh, that. Wow. In that little groove right there. But now we gotta get this this out. I see a lot of people take and put little rubber put sockets. It, once it once the rings come out as it close Not yet. Goodbye. Almost. I can't get to it now. It's out, but we'll have to can oh, yeah. it come out more? Yeah, if I can get something to it. This won't fit in there to it. This thing here, you need to push this rod. <coughs> Where are you pushing? Where your hands is? On oh. this. It's still in there pretty tight. Let me uh, see what else I got to work at out of there with. Mm hmm and that's your piston and that's what you'll probably get put back in here will be a lot smaller than this and a lot lighter than this you know uh, a lot stronger than this that's some pretty good weight for a piston and they make them so much lighter nowadays and stronger well, this is from 1968 yeah but they still look the same in a way new pistons yeah. old pistons yeah they're, yeah they're still real similar a lot of them has a lot smaller yep cut and then not as much up stuff up there anymore and the thinner it's so cool because i see pictures of pistons and mm -hmm. videos and stuff and now Got one in my hand. And that's your all your different rings. Yep. I know you got a. I think one of them's called a compression ring. One of them's an oil ring. I'm not really sure. And there's a gap here for the oil to get through. No, that's the gap that you can spread them, put them on, and it pops back in. Okay. And that gap would close up when you squeeze it. Mm-hmm to put it back in the engine. Oh, I see. See, once see, it fits tight in that engine, so. And that's what you want, you want it to be nice and tight. Right, there's a tool that you put on this and you crank it and it squeezes these all closed so you can pop them in. Otherwise, you'd, you'd never get them in. If somebody wants to, to squeeze to, these in. wants to rebuild the 350 to absolutely origin, back to original, they would try to fix all these mm -hmm. instead of putting new pistons or? Well, they they could try, but if the motors got to be bored, then these pistons could not be reused because you're making a bigger hole, mm -hmm. and this piston's not going to fit that hole no more. So you got to get an oversized piston. But yeah, typically, if you could reuse these, a lot of people would, okay. but probably most people wouldn't. I guess it would just depend on what they, what they were doing with it. Number two. Excited to see what will happen, but the machine shops are very busy these days. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see. Who... Not that I'm in any hurry. Yeah. Like Ken said, I don't really have anything to put this in yet. 
but still want to see it get done up. Now we're using the back of the hammer so we don't damage. Yeah, well, it, it's a brass hammer. It probably ain't gonna damage them anyway. I just, I just get a little carried away. Brass is real soft metal, so it will, it will bend, it will mess it before it messes steel up. Mhm. Mm Might have to hit it a bit more. No, you got it. I thought I did, but it's like this side here is still stuck. But you can't hit it no more. It's already all the way in there. One. Okay. Watch your hand. Go ahead. Now we've got a screw inside this. You want piece. me to rotate the crank? A little bit to give you a little more room. See how yeah. it's kind of got you wedged up over on that side. I think I can take this. And you want to turn it. it that way? Yeah, yeah, get it out of your way. There we go. That's better. Now we're Too fast. That one's gone. <laughs> there was a bolt in there. There's okay. the bolt and there is the piston. Alright. Alright, let's keep this moving. I'm going over to number five. Let me stamp it. Four. that before we uh need to, yeah I'm turning it this way or this yeah way? turn it that way put it on the T there you go they kind of interlock with each other and mm -hmm. it turns easier keep going I'd say right about there. That's pretty let me, good. Let me stamp it. Where'd that hammer at? Yeah. You haven't stamped this one? Not five, six, seven, or eight. So this is five? Mm-hmm. There's five. Six. So you did eight there. I was just about to say stop. Mm. Uh, we'll make a little thing on that one. And put a little star on it. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Okay, so this one here, can you somehow take... We'll, we'll put something to kind of just scratch that, like a little slice, so it... Can't you just make what, more dots all around down here, so we know that's the number seven? Oh, here, make... Pass me that. 
You want to put seven more on there? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we put one more here. Okay, and then actually make the number seven. Oh, okay. That's a I'll seven. buy that. <laughs> that one's Only me piece. and you's gonna know about this. So <laughs> no. Somebody else sees it, they're gonna go, what in the heck? Well, they're gonna look, well, there's a number on seven there. on it, so that must be piston <laughs> seven. <laughs> All right. right I gotta take off this bolt. <laughs> Got it. Because the one, I, the two I gave you before, one was from five, one was from six. Not that that would matter, they're all the same. Yeah. Oh, that was easy. That's how they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Move your hand. I'm more comfortable with my fingers there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Five. That's five, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Taking out six now. Okay. Right there near your feet, Kent. Bolt. Okay. And here's the other one. This is for seven. Full assembly is trying to turn. The the more of these you take off, the easier this thing turns. Okay. Because it has no resistance. So oh, yeah, look at that I now. can turn it by hand now. I don't know Let if you can get to it right there. I'm trying to figure where um, where's the best spot to get that out of your way. Over here. You can pull that up and hit yeah, it right there. Perfect. Let me get that. Seven. Number eight. This is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Dropped. This is here's number twelve. Number twelve. That's how many dots we got on this one. No, oh, forget. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't confuse me, okay? I'm like, what's going on? Why would there be twelve? I'm understanding this all wrong, kids. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> Bring you guys in here, all the pistons are out. Let's see. There they are. All numbered as well, and we've got a lucky seven. <laughs> <laughs> Your main caps. Main caps. You, are you loosening them up for me? Yeah. What number have you got on there? That won't, uh, that won't loosen these on its own. Oh. It's a 5 eighths. Really? 
really loosen these up for me, didn't you? Okay, so now you're stamping these as well? You don't necessarily have to stamp this when you know where it goes, mm -hmm. but I'm going to, and I'm gonna stamp it on one side. Uh, go ahead and take that one out. Okay. And I'm gonna stamp it right here. One, and then right it's here. It's so small, you can't even see that. One. Yeah, you'll be able to see that. When that thing's cleaned, that'll stand out like a sore thumb. It'll be like brand new mail. So my, my 12 stamps on that number seven's really gonna stand <laughs> out there. <laughs> so I got one and one. It's not really necessary on this, and you know where it goes. Okay. But uh, just in case it could get turned around the wrong way, I wanted a stamp there and a stamp here. So all your stamp marks is gonna be on the same side. So this is separate, this whole piece? This is separate than this, yes. Okay. Yes, this right here mm -hmm. comes off now. Same thing. Same, we take the bearing out. It's what holds that in place. This in I place. See. And the two bolts for this. So these had two, the front. Yes. And there's two in the back, but the ones in the middle have got four bolts. Right. Do the same thing here. So that's you're going to put a number two on that. Okay. Okay. Take off these big discs, right? Oh, no, take the... what? No, that's your crank. That's that my is crank. the one big piece of metal. See, it rotates like that. It drives them pistons up and down, up and down. Just like that. And it's one big unit. We gotta sit it. Right over here on the table somewhere, and it's where is it stuck? Was it just heavy? It's heavy. I think it's something. Oh, this thing's stucking it, sticking it. Do you want to grab the other side and we'll try and yank it out? What is that? That's what it wants. <clears throat> they look so good. Yep, complete engine. Totally disassembled and ready to go. So that's all, that's it. There's nothing else, oh, that's rubbish. Oh, there's our bolt. There you go. So this is what I'm going to give to the machine shop. Yep. What is this sticking out? Old pan dipstick tube. Get oil um, from the pan to the You're, machine. To, like you pull it out to check your oil. Oh, the transmission. The oil. Okay. Engine oil. Transmission's got one too, but this one's for the engine. It's just a tube that's pressed into this block. Oh, that that's your, right. This that is your, upside down right yeah, now. Your dipstick goes in there, and it comes into the pan that tells you how much oil you got in it. Okay. So this goes into the machine shop. Mm-hmm. And um, what else do I give to the machine shop? Uh, this crank. The mains, and that's basically it. This, this, and that. 
just those three sets of parts. Mm -hmm. I order new pistons. That's about all you're going to be using. And when I order pistons, what do I ask for? Well, first thing we need to do is talk to somebody to see what kind of power we're looking at and get a recommendation on the type of pistons, connecting rods, this, that, make sure our crank's compatible with all that. Mm -hmm. And then we can get a uh, the type of piston that we want to go with, connecting rod, uh, crank, if we can't use this one, but we I think we can, and uh, cam and all that stuff that will that we're going to be changing, which is basically everything on this table, except for this. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be using this. Okay, so we're going to talk to your guy yep. and find out um, how much power we can increase on these. And yeah. he will tell us what kind of pistons we would need. What, what parts we need. What parts, and then I'll have to go and order those. You can, you can also do that like with a, like Super Shops, the place I used to go to. You could tell them what you're wanting to do, mm -hmm. what kind of power you want to make, what RPM range you want to make it in, and they can recommend you the parts that you need to make that happen. Okay. Uh, but we'll, but we'll go old school to the old timer and uh, and go through him and and figure all this out. Take you all along with me. <laughs> Hopefully, he won't be camera shy. He probably will be. Yes, he will be. Well, I'll talk him into it. Check that out. There's the blog.